Alright, so we are all completely aware that Nemesis' add-ons suck, and as a Nemesis main, I really, really wish that I could have some variety to bring to the trials instead of just more or less going add-on loss for every single game, because none of them really add anything of value to the game. But what I have just done is I have reworked every single Nemesis add-on to exactly what I think they should be, and bear in mind you have to take these with a pinch of salt, these are all just very loose concepts, however, I really feel like this variety could bring a lot more strength and a lot more fun to Nemesis matches because I feel like Nemesis has some of the weakest add-ons in DBD and that is a crime. So devs, if you're watching, if you're listening for some bizarre reason, implement these, you will make me a very, very happy Nemesis main. But it's a very simple premise, I'm going to go through every single add-on, every single thing that I've changed and explain why I think it would be good and why I think this would be better implemented into the game. So let's begin with the brown add-ons. Firstly, we have Brian's intestines. Now, Brian's intestines normally increase the movement speed by 0.25 meters per second. This isn't too bad, and considering it is a brown, it doesn't need to be absolutely over-the-top strong. So I've just simply doubled this so that basement movement speed for zombies is 0.5 meters per second instead of 0.25. Again, a small change, but one that will just give zombies a tiny bit more power in the trial, considering 0.25 doesn't really do anything. As a brown, 0.5 seems absolutely reasonable to me. Next up, we have the visitor's wristband, and similar to Brian's intestines, I've just basically taken what they've done and increased it ever so slightly, because there's nothing wrong with these add-ons per se, they're just far too weak as they are. So, for this one, I've increased the survivor detection range of zombies by 5 meters instead of 2 meters, and the field of view is increased by 25 degrees instead of 10 degrees. It might seem a little bit much, but again, it doesn't really add too much, it'll just make zombies a little bit more aware, and hopefully be able to use them a bit more effectively in a chase. Next up, we've got the damage syringe, which normally increases vaccine injection time for survivors by 2 seconds and increases the killer instinct by 1.5 seconds. I have completely changed this, more or less. I've increased the vaccine injection time by survivors by 7 seconds and also added when a survivor is whipped with my tentacle strike, if they are holding a vaccine, they will then drop it. Now, again, just to kind of a little bit more pressure, it won't do too much, but I have noticed that survivors recently have been opening crates at the start of the game, carrying an injection round with them, ready for them to use it whenever and wherever they can. But with this little add-on, that'll be stopped a little bit as they have to be a touch more careful on when they can hold it and when to use it. Now, next up is the Stars Field Combat Manual. Now, normally, this makes it so that after survivors hit a zombie, the aura of the zombie will be turned yellow for six seconds. This is absolutely terrible, so I have changed it to something a little bit better, which means that Nemesis will now be able to see the aura of all supply cases in the trial in white, so you're able to use it effectively, plan where survivors might head if you have infected them, and if you see a chest has opened, you might be able to get a little bit of information on where a survivor is. Alright, so we're still going through these fairly quickly. The next one is going to be the admin wristband, which normally increases the survivor detection range of zombies by 4 meters and increases the field view by 17.5. I have scrapped all of that, and now if a survivor fails a skill check within 24 meters of a zombie, their aura is revealed for 15 seconds. Now, I, as I said, I wanted to put a little bit more variety into these add-ons, so I thought it'd be really cool if zombies could kind of be a little bit more aware on the nemesis' behalf. If a survivor does fail a skill check, whether it be through a generator, through healing, or anything like that, their aura will be revealed to the nemesis, and it doesn't. It may sound a little bit much, but bearing in mind you'd already get a notification on where the survivor would be anyway through the loud noise notification. I don't think 15 seconds of aura reveal would be too d drastic, as it just let you plan where you need to attack if you want to go for the survivor that's just failed the skill check. Next up, we have the Adrenaline Injector. The old one used to increase the Killer Instinct duration by 3 seconds, which is absolutely awful. And I thought Adrenaline would, you know, you can have a lot more fitting with the word Adrenaline. So now what I thought with this one is, after hitting a survivor with a Tentacle Strike, you will gain 5% haste for 5 seconds. It doesn't sound too much, and it isn't going to do too much to the point where it's overpowered, but it'll keep Nemesis in the chase closer, and hopefully be able to down those survivors quicker if they're not too careful. Now, next up is probably what used to be his best add-on, Marvin's Blood. Marvin's Blood basically increases the mutation rate when you hit a survivor with your tentacle by 0.75. I have changed that now completely to when you hit a generator with a T2 tentacle strike or above, the generator will explode and start to regress. So, I thought it doesn't seem right that the tentacle can instantly destroy pallets and breakable walls, but the tentacle wouldn't do anything towards generators. Of course, no perks will be affected by this. You can't pop goes the weasel with a tentacle strike, but if you're passing somewhere and you want to quickly regress that generator, hit it with a T2 tentacle and carry on the chase. I just thought it's a nice little option that could really, really bring something to him if you're careful with it. 
Next up is Mikhail's Eye. Mikhail's Eye normally increases the zombie movement speed by 0.35 meters per second. I've just increased that to 0.8. Again, zombies increase in speed isn't actually too drastic or as drastic as you think because considering what the iridescent one does where it increases it by i believe 1.5 meters for 60 seconds after a zombie uh, after a generator has been completed sorry this it kind of is about half of that but constant so again really good for keeping pressure on zombies but not too overpowered to where zombies will be a constant annoying threat and last for the yellows, we have the zombie heart. The zombie heart normally increases mutation rate when destroying zombies with the tentacle by 0.5 contamination points. Completely rewrote that as well. Now you'll gain 15% cooldown reduction on missed tentacle strikes. Just kind of like Barb's glasses does for the Demogorgon when you attack a pallet. This does it after you've missed a tentacle strike. The recovery on the animation will be 15% quicker, which means that hopefully missing tentacle strikes won't, can't be such a big deal and such a valuable miss. Okay, now we're moving on to the greens. The first green is going to be the Liquor Tongue. Now, this is probably one of the worst add-ons that he's got. It increases Hindered, the status effect duration, after being contaminated by 0.2 seconds. That does absolutely nothing. So, I have completely changed that. Contaminating a survivor for the first time will no longer give them a burst of speed whatsoever. Normally, when you hit a survivor for the first time with your whip, they get a huge speed boost, as well as hitting them again, and then for the down. This completely eradicates that. If you hit a survivor with your your whip they will run at normal speed and hopefully you will be able to pressure them much much easier this would be a great add-on but also not too strong depending on how well the survivors can play after that we have the plant 43 vines which increase the supply opening times for survivors by four seconds i've basically taken that and put some steroids in it now supply cases take 15 extra seconds to open and the injection time it takes for survivors to use it will also be increased by 10 seconds again i thought this one was okay but just needed the numbers bumping up a little bit and with an extra little buff on top of that this could be absolutely viable and really really good for keeping survivors pressure on the vaccines Next, we have the Serotonin Injector, which you will gain the undetectable status effect for 15 seconds when a zombie is destroyed. Honestly, I think this is one of the better ones, but the time it takes is far, far too low. So, I have simply doubled it. It isn't going to be too OP, of course, because zombies, there's only two of them. You have to be in the right place at the right time. But this will make it much more viable for you to actually be able to creep up on survivors, potentially, with undetectable and get that surprise hit and jump scare. After that is the T-Virus Sample. T-Virus Sample increases the mutation rate when destroying zombies with a tentacle strike by one contamination point. But now zombies will no longer spawn at sacrificial hooks. Instead, they will spawn 15 meters away from a random survivor. So really good for information. If you want to take the risk to destroy a zombie, then when it respawns, if you look where it is, you'll be able to get a little bit of viable information on to know at least the general location of where a survivor might be. And if you are going to then chase that survivor, you know that there'll potentially be a zombie there for you to use in the chase to get that extra hit, to get that down and to get that hook. So again, another little fun one that could potentially be quite all right in use. And finally, for the green add-ons, we have the Tyrant Gore. Now, the current version of Tyrant Gore increases the mutation rate when destroying zombies by 0.25 and reduces the zombie respawn time by 5 seconds. Completely scrapped all of that. You don't need to. If you are good with your whip, you should be able to get to T2 easily with two hits on two different survivors. So now I've completely changed it to the fact that zombies can no longer be blinded. They cannot be flashlight blind. They cannot be flashbang blind. Now flashlights and blinding will be completely irrelevant to them, which will be great for pressure. And if you see a lobby full of four survivors that have got all got flashlights you can now bring this to kind of curb the effects of that and still keep your zombies in the game with as much pressure as they can again i'm really surprised that this one isn't already an add-on all right now we're on to the purples the first purple that we have is the broken recovery coin which normally removes one supply case from the trial this doesn't do much at all. Yeah, fair enough, having one survivor that's bound to be infected for the entire game can be good, but for a purple, it just really isn't. So, now survivors will not be able to see the aura of supply cases. Kind of like rule set number two for the pig, where survivors won't be able to see the jigsaw boxes, now survivors will not be able to see supply cases at all, and they will have to randomly find them throughout the trial, making them really, really waste time trying to become uninfected if they want to, or have to get lucky and find one at the start of the trial. After that is the Depleted Ink Ribbon. The Depleted Ink Ribbon in the current DBD reduces zombie respawn time by 5 seconds, increases the movement speed by 0.5, and once all 5 generators are completed, any zombie that is destroyed will respawn at an exit gate. Again, for a purple, this just doesn't do enough. So, I have changed it quite a fair bit. 
Now pallets will no longer kill zombies but instead will stun them for 10 seconds. Now zombies being killed by pallets isn't actually too popular, you don't really see survivors wasting pallets this way but if they do, now with this they won't really be able to do anything about it. A 10 second stun and the pallet will have been wasted for the zombies to be fine. But this is the part that I really enjoy, for every generator that is completed increase zombie movement speed by a stackable 0.25%. Now, this probably would be very, very, very overpowered, especially when paired with another movement speed add-on, but I think this would just be so fun for zombies to be able to get stronger throughout the game, as Nemesis gets stronger throughout the game as well. And again, it wouldn't be too much, there's only two zombies spread across the ra around the map, and depending on what map, they may never even bump into them, so to be able to give them a stackable increase in movement speed could be really fun to see them zooming around the map and getting new information as the game goes on. But as a cost to this, Nemesis could no longer destroy destroy zombies. Now, I know what you're all saying, I'm, I'm kind of making this in an ideal world where they don't get stuck every 10 seconds, but if that was to be fixed, I think that would be a good kind of side effect, a good kind of balancing act for this add-on is the fact that Nemesis can no longer destroy the zombies. So, in an ideal world, yes, that's what I'm picturing this as. If it was implemented in today's current Nemesis zombie strategies, no, not a chance. Zombies would get stuck too much and they'd be stuck there for the entire game, but, you know, we can all dream. Next up, we have Jill Sandwich. Jill Sandwich in the game. After a survivor unlocks a supply case, their aura is revealed to the nemesis for 12 seconds. But now, for me, what I have done is gain 35% cooldown reduction upon breaking pallets with the tentacle strike. Now, the best thing, obviously, nemesis can do is his tank against pallets. This just kind of really increases that very strong in the fact that his animation after breaking a pallet will be drastically reduced down. Now, not as much as full stacks we save the best for last, and maybe, yeah, maybe 35% is a slight too bit much but I thought it would still be a really good idea for Nemesis to have a sort of cooldown add-on that affects Pallet so that he can just basically be the tank that he is and keep in the fight and in the chase as long and as best as possible and I feel like a, an add-on along these lines would be really good for doing that. Next up we have the Knee Air Parasite, don't know how you pronounce it still, but what this does in the live servers currently is what when becoming contaminated survivors suffer from the oblivious status effect for 60 seconds. Again, not too bad, but I think we can improve it. So now, gain 15% cooldown reduction on successful tentacle strikes. So kind of like the similar one where it was on missed one. This is basically when you do hit a survivor, your tentacle will, animation will be 15% quicker. So again, you can get into that fight, keep doing what you're doing, and I feel like this would be a really strong purple add-on. So now we're on to the last two, both of his iridescent ones. The first one is going to be the iridescent umbrella badge. Now normally, after using a vaccine, survivors will be exposed for 60 seconds. This would be good if this could only happen a maximum of four times, and it's situational if you're in the right place at the right time. It just isn't good as an iridescent, I would say. It's very, it's too far too circumstantial. However, my idea for this would be to remove all the supply crates from the trial. Survivors are no longer able to use injections and vaccines that once they are infected, they are infected for good and I also thought it'd be really cool to give zombies a really good power in the fact that they will now leave survivors in the dying state from healthy so they are basically an insta down any survivor that gets stuck with a zombie consider them exposed if they are injured or healthy they are going to be on the floor but as a little kind of benefit to make this not as strong, zombies will also no longer infect survivors. I feel like this would be really good for keeping survivors really, really scared of the zombies. I feel like the zombies are very much memed upon for the most part, unless a survivor kind of just walks into them inadvertently. But with this, survivors will be absolutely keeping their eye out as much as they possibly can for zombies because they will not want to get surprised hit. And especially considering that they'll always be infected as well, they'll have to be really careful with how they play. And especially if the nemesis tries to work a survivor into a zombie at a particular tile if one is close. This this one would be so much fun and I think it would be a really good and, and honestly balanced iridescent. And for the final one, we have the Shatter Star Badge. Now, Shatter Star Badge increases zombie movement speed by 1.5 meters per second, 60 seconds after a gen is complete. Or for 60 seconds, sorry. Now, completely scrap that. Tentacle Strike can now hit multiple objects, survivors at once. I, If I could pick one to be implemented into the game, it would be this one. This one would be so fun to be able to really punish survivors making incorrect decisions. If two survivors huddle up, if a survivor tries to body block somebody, slam your whip, they're both getting hit anyway. If a survivor drops a pallet in front of the nemesis and he's stuck in the animation, hit them, get rid of the pallet, and hit the survivor at the same time. I feel like this one would be so, so cool. A little bit strong, but survivors would just have to adapt with how they play. 
So, guys, that's it. Another bit of a silly video, more of a discussion and a wish list, if you will. I really would like to see some of these implemented. Nemesis add-ons currently absolutely suck. If you don't know what they do, feel free to click in the top right. I'm going to put a link to the video where I rank all of his add-ons and explain what they do. Um, so, if you haven't seen that, go watch that. But, yeah, I really think DBD needs to quickly give Nemesis some love. He's a perfect killer. He's absolutely fine. I don't think he really needs anything other than a couple of small tweaks uh, to his play style, but his add-ons are severely lacking. I feel like if these were implemented nemesis would be so fun and have so much amazing opportunity for uh, for experimentation with his add-ons so guys you will have to let me know what you think do you think i'm talking out my ass do you think these are really good ideas and if so what is your favorite one that i've suggested that you would like to see implemented into dead by daylight that is what i would like to know thank you all so much for watching if you want me to do this with any, any other killers that necessarily have weak add-ons like the twins or on rio maybe then feel free to let me know in the comments below i'm happy will be more than happy to make another one of these but but thank you all so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye for now.